Are you building yourself a new gaming PC? Then you're going to need to find the case of your dreams. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the very best cases on offer. So finding your perfect match really has never been simpler. You can almost think of this video as a bit like Tinder, but for PC chassis. I'm going to call it date created. No, actually, that's very lame. Let's just show you the very best cases on offer after a short word from this video's sponsor. Lexar is having a huge Black Friday sale and there are masses of deals available. Lexar has an enormous range of memory products from super fast PCIe SSDs to SD cards to RGB memory, perfect for next gen gaming. So what are you waiting for? Hit the link down below to kit out your camera, gaming rig or anything else with some rapid storage with prices up to 60% off while stocks last. Let us begin with a quick refresher. What exactly do you need to know about buying a PC chassis and what has changed in the last few months? Well, you should always remember that a PC enclosure is going to be the home of your computer for literally years to come. So always plan ahead for future upgrades rather than cutting corners straight from the off. The first thing that you need to do is to decide on a size and form factor. Obviously, the larger the case, the more stuff you'll actually be able to fit in here and the better the thermals will be. But obviously, the more expensive and more physical space these cases will start to take up. So think carefully. Typically, they come in three main sizes, ITX, Micro ATX and then ATX. A full size ATX case can almost always support a smaller size motherboard, but a Micro ATX board will never fit inside an ITX size chassis. Most cases are usually ATX, as this is the most popular motherboard size, and it will allow people to add in all the expansion cards they need, and in the case of 2022, stupidly large size graphics cards. And I would argue that this is the biggest change in 2022 when it comes to chassis, because somehow we've gone from this to this and as you can see there is a ginormous difference in fact this actually takes up three physical slots so even if you have a fairly recent case that has two slots but then allows more room for the extra width this still won't fit inside it so buy very very carefully Fortunately, it is actually very simple to check whether a card will fit in a case. You just need to look at the physical dimensions on the GPU manufacturer's website before then cross-referencing with the cases and putting the numbers together and seeing if they're compatible. You will also want to make sure that these cards get plenty of airflow because they use so much power, it's all very well actually physically fitting in your case, but you need to make sure there is room above, below, and actually to the side as well. In fact, I would go as far to say that in 2022, front mounting a radiator is a very bad idea because if you're bringing in hot air from the CPU cooler into the graphics card, your whole system is going to verge on overheating. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. Oh, actually, no, I've got a front mounted radiator and it's fine. Yes, but we're talking about a 450 watt graphics card and potentially a 350 watt CPU cooler. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it shouldn't be done. In terms of costings, as you spend more money, the quality of features and materials will of course increase. Please don't overlook this, as cheap cases can often feel very flimsy, they come with cheap, very noisy fans, and they lose out on USB ports, especially USB Type-C. Whereas on the contrary, more expensive cases are much thicker, quieter, and pack things like fan and RGB hubs, lighting strips, and multiple high quality fans as standard. The final thing to note before we proceed to the recommendations is to always think about calling before you buy anything, especially the CPU. Because it really is incredibly easy to get confused between support for fans and then support for radiators. So you should always check that you can properly top mount the radiator size of your choice or physically fit in the air CPU cooler into the case, as there have been numerous times that I've started a build only to find out later that the parts just don't fit together properly. Hooray, we made it, enough rambling. Now on to the recommendations. What are the best cases that you can buy? Current pricing, by the way, as always, is listed down below with my Amazon affiliate links. Oh, that sounded very dramatic there, didn't it? I'm just stalling for time, please don't leave. Or do it. Go on then, big man. Show me what you got. We're going to start our journey with the best bargain basement case. And my pick is the Aerocool Trinity Mini. A very entry level case, but one that was actually surprisingly easy to build in and only cuts corners that won't really matter to you anyway. I mean, okay, it is a bit small and flimsy and the fans aren't even motherboard controllable, so they're on max speed all of the time, but actually the end result worked surprisingly well. It's good looking, it supports a modest micro ATX build, and it should serve your entry into PC gaming for years to come. If you do want something a little bit bigger though, don't worry, 
we have some good budget ATX options. They're just a little bit more expensive. Firstly, the MSI MagForge 100R. This is incredible value, as you get loads of good quality RGB fans, an expandable RGB hub, and decent airflow on the front of the case. The main drawback? Well, it's not the biggest, so RTX 4080 proof, it probably isn't. If you're after a slightly larger, arguably more flexible chassis, then why not step up to Deepcool CG560? This is actually very similar to the Corsair 4000D Airflow, but it is way cheaper, plus it actually comes packing RGB fans as standard. It's very well built, it looks absolutely fantastic, and it can take a whole lot of hardware. The only thing is that cable management could be improved around the back, so be prepared to put some extra work in. I'd also like to add an honourable mention to Fractal's Pop Air. This is a little bit too expensive to be the best option, but you get loads of colours to choose from, which is very unusual for 2022, alongside great mesh airflow and a sturdy build. It's just a shame that USB-C is an optional extra, but if you're after something a little bit different, it's definitely worth considering. Now, who here is a massive fan of airflow? <laughs> Probably you, so let's look at the airflow cases. Up first, the brand spanking new NZXT H5, and this is a gimmick. That's not really a gimmick. The special fan dedicated for graphics card cooling. This means that you can front mount a radiator and still get proper airflow to the graphics card, which is a really nice touch. Again, it's not the biggest, but it should be more than enough for most builds that use a 240 all-in-one liquid cooler. But if it's not, then NZXT's H7 has you covered here. Though it doesn't come with this extra fan, which is a little bit sad times. I'm also a big fan of Antex DP503. Second time I've made that joke now and it's still funny. This really is a gorgeous looking RGB mesh case with a fan and RGB hub for easy cable management, space for the RTX 4090 Founders Edition, USB Type-C, and a 360 radiator all at the top. I can't really fault it, other than that it's at the same price as my new favourite all-round option, the Lee & Lee Lancool 216. This has even bigger 200mm fans at the front, it can fit a ginormous RTX 4090 Trinity inside it, and it even lets you mount a fan to the rear of the case for extra graphics card cooling. The downsides? Well, only one. It's a bit plain, but is this really a fault? Well it is if you don't want plain, unacceptable you say. So how about we move on to the best looking cases of 2022. Let's start with an absolute banger, Be Quiet's Pure Base 500 FX, a new addition for 2022, and it comes with Be Quiet's awesome RGB fans as standard, to create a high-end machine that looks amazing, but without sounding like a jet's taking off. Do watch out for CPU cooling though, as only a 240 is actually supported up top, and a front-mounted radiator will cool your thermals on this one, don't do it, I've done this and it didn't work very well. If you're looking for something a little bit more on the larger size, then why not consider Corsair's absolutely stunning 5000X, a case that just keeps giving. It is just so easy to build in, and it oozes tempered glass and RGB wherever you look, all whilst allowing for two 360 radiators to be mounted at the exact same time. It is a chassis I know inside and out. I've actually used the airflow version for my personal liquid cooled rig, and i9 water block issues aside, it is absolutely ideal. Very much on the expensive side, but ideal. But there can be only one winner of the most glamorous case of 2022, and actually this one was dead easy. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Height Y60. Some say that's a fish tank, others say that it's, okay, actually it does look a bit like that now you mention it, but come on, what a thing of beauty. Packing a vertical GPU mount as standard, this enclosure is all about showing off, whilst allowing brilliant thermals all thanks to the floor-mounted GPU fans. There are plenty of colour options, it's easy to work with, and it manages to stand out and look quite unique. Any issues to report? Well, not really. It's just expensive and it is very big, but both of these are very similar to Corsair's case, and I guess they are both to be expected for something in its class. Oh, boring, come on Centric, those are all massive cases. That's not what I want at all, I want something small. Let me know, what have you got? Okay, I get it, you like small, not a problem. 
Let's start with MACX, and here I have two options for you. At the more budget-friendly end, it's Deepcool's McCube 110. Suitable for all but the most powerful builds, this case is super easy to build in, it supports surprisingly large hardware, and it looks super, super clean. The problem, well, you're probably already thinking about it, airflow. It's absolutely fine for 3050s, 3060s, and I've even put a 3070 in it, but let's be honest, the thermals aren't going to be the best. So instead, why not consider the Fractal Pop Mini Air? This is one I actually haven't used just yet, so I can't properly recommend it, but mine is on the way. And if it's anything like its larger cousin, then it will look great, whilst allowing for big boy graphics cards, all with great airflow. Get subscribed so you don't miss it. It's going to be a fun build. It's going to be my personal rig. Very exciting stuff. But I hear you cry, Micro ATX isn't small enough. What about ITX? Well, this was actually the easiest pick of the bunch. Just buy the Meshroom S from SSUPD. It's the revision of last year's Meshlicious, and it's basically perfect. It fits masses of hardware, yet still manages great thermals, and importantly, it is beginner-friendly for building inside. I actually use one myself, and it is great. The only problem isn't really a problem, but mere physics. It won't fit a triple-slot GPU inside, so I'm sorry, RTX 4090. You're not welcome here. But now is the time for my favourite bit, the all-time best case of 2022. And there's been some good contenders, but there can be only one. There is no doubt about it, it was very close, but there can be only one winner. And this year, it's the Lee & Lee 011 Dynamic Evo. This is a case that looks drop-dead gorgeous. It's available in black or white, it's actually reversible, so you can do like an upside-down build, and it just has so much cooling potential, it's frankly stupid. This is a chassis that really lets your hardware do the talking, as you can put pretty much anything in it, cool it properly, and then let it all sing in the process. Vertical GPU mounts? Check. 10 fans, check. Proper custom loops, the world really is your oyster. But what about the problems? Even the case of the year must have some, right? Well, just one really, and that's money. It is definitely not the cheapest thing out there, and it actually comes with zero fans out the box, so all the ones you're seeing now would cost you a fortune. And while there are loads of extra capabilities and expandability options with this case, a lot of these are actually optional extras that will cost you, well, extra money. But hey, if you do want the absolute best case out there, be assured that in my opinion, on balance, this has to be it. But of course, the question very much goes out to you guys on this. What case are you using at the moment? Would you recommend it? And what do you think is the best case of the year? Have I got these right or am I way off the mark? What have I missed? Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured or maybe learn a little bit more, you can find links to absolutely everything featured in the description down below, where you can also smash the like button and get yourself subscribed. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.